Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Jessica McGovern, international multi-award winning portrait photographer. And every single Friday, I sit down with you guys to share a tip, technique, topic, or tool within five minutes, hence five minute Fridays. If you're new here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. The bell icon will give you a notification every single time I upload a YouTube video. We upload every single week on a Friday, like I've already said, because five minute Fridays and stuff, and we do other cool things as well. So you don't wanna be missing out on any of that. Today's video is brought to you by us and also so Data Color, the creators of Spider, and essentially I'm going to be reviewing one of their kind of tools, showing you guys how it works, and hopefully blowing your mind as much as it blew mine. But I guess you know I am a bit weird, so it might just be me. Who knows? So the product I'm here to talk to you guys today about is the Spider Color Checker. Now I've got the big one where there's loads of different squares in it, but you can get the 24 version. Now, what is this? It is to give you perfect color. And I'm not lying, guys. I will never do a photo shoot without this ever again, especially if there's human skin involved, because, oh my good God, it is freaking amazing. We've talked a lot about white balance on the channel, like a lot about white balance on the channel because it's so integral. And in all of the challenge review videos, we pick up white balance issues. This solves white balance issues, but then also goes above and beyond to solve color issues and creates just such a dreamy, perfect level of color in the images. Ah, oh, perfect. It's so perfect. I can't even believe it. So without further ado, let's look at this product in a little bit more detail and I'll show you guys exactly how it works. I'm super, super, super excited to show you guys this. Like genuinely, I really am. So essentially, it's like the passport checker and essentially you open it up and it has a load of different kind of swatches inside. So we have gray swatches and other bits and pieces in there, but I've actually switched this around. So when you get it, if you get the big one with loads of other bits, you can pop open the sections, take out your little checker card and then flip it around. And that will give you the actual 48 version. I personally like to be able to set my white balance in the scene. So I'm gonna be going ahead and using the other side, right? So I prefer to have one side as this, but this side is really important to leave as it is. So this is the one with your gray cards coming down the side. It's always best to set white balance with this in E2, which is this little square right there. E2 is the best white balance square, okay? But you can kind of use any of the gray squares. You then have your color swatches, which Spider's software matches to their kind of, this is what that color should actually be like in our system. And it outputs a preset. And I'm gonna go through all of that with you. But how I've personally used this is I've gone out to a location, asked a model to hold it, or if it's just photographing a dog or just photographing a horse or an, another animal or an object that can't hold stuff then I will just help kind of hold it in the scene with it or rest it against something, or you can put them on a tripod because they do have a screw point at the bottom. There is another little important part about this, which we're gonna talk about at another time, but you can pop up a thread from the top there. So there's like another thread here that you can pop up from the top and you can pop your spider cube on the top, which again, game changer. But this one I wanted to start with because I just think it's amazing and you know I wouldn't lie to you. So anyway, here is the different colors. You have your subject hold it in the scene and then you utilize a plugin for Lightroom, Photoshop, Camera Raw, whatever you want to use to output a preset that you then put on your images to make all the colors perfect. And because I know nobody's gonna believe me about this, right? I know you're all gonna be like, Jess, you're lying. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna show you. So on the screen right now, you should be able to see some pictures of Fada and Fada's owner who we photographed in the woods the other day. So these are raw files straight out of camera. Nothing has happened to them. They are literally as they were shot, but we managed to get a couple of extra shots with uh, Fada and Fada's owner with the color checker that we have from Data Color. So the spider checker here I set up literally just as I showed you it. In hindsight, I would have twizzled this around and I'll show you why. So how does this work? Well, what we need to do is go ahead and into the develop section. And with the develop section open, we need to do a rotation and a crop to basically get these squares on this side of the image the right way around. So I'm gonna go into the crop tool, unlock the padlock, 
And then I'm going to bring the corners of the picture to the corners of that inner square. So we're kind of set there. Now you can at this point change your white balance. That's optional. So E2 is this square here. And then these other little sections are quite important. So this white point should be between 90 and 96. So if it's higher than that, you want to bring your highlights down a little bit or your whites down a little bit to make sure that we're sat nicely between 90 and 96 on the percentage points that you can see under here. So I'm like a 95, which is okay. What I might do is just bring the overall exposure down and then reset my highlights back off, which I'm happy with. So then the black point, this is the point of contention that I have because with animals, and especially out in the woods in natural light, this black point is rarely going to be black when the subject holds it. So I kind of ignore it. Let's be honest. I just ignore it. But I do, you know, give it a good go. If we're way out, then I will bring it down. But as it stands right now, that is fine. So we've got our white balance point. We've got our white point keeping it below that 96 level. So 90 to 96. If you're going for awards, I would recommend keeping that around 90. Okay? Just tip, 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 tips today from me. Okay, then I need to rotate this. So I'm going to right click, go into transform, and I'm going to rotate this left counterclockwise so that I've got my skin tone swatch up here, my black swatch down here, my white swatch here, and my teal swatch here. Then I'm going to right click and go to edit in. And I'm going to use the spider checker editing. Now to get this here, all you need to do is use the little card that comes with it. There's a software serial number on the back of it that you can go ahead and type in, download the software. When it's installed, make sure you quit Lightroom, reopen it, and it should already be there like magical stuff, right? Magical, magical, magical stuff. So we're going to go into spider checker editing. And this is the point where you set your export settings. I just leave mine like that. You can change that in your preferences, but it's code totally up to you. We then go into edit and it will open up the spider checker after making a TIFF copy of the file. So then look, you can see why my rotation and crop was required. So we've got that black point in the bottom right and you can see these little squares that are kind of sat over the top. Now you can move them and make sure that they're relatively central by wiggling around these little arrows at the side. One thing the arrows don't do in my personal experience is rotate. Hence my learning. When we've got that and we're all kind of centralized, it's up to you which mode you choose. I like the colorimetric version, but you can do portrait, which works super nicely on skin tones, but colorimetric does also, so I'm leaving it on colorimetric. And then I'm gonna save it to Lightroom and I'm gonna click save calibration. This is important because this means I can put it on all of the other images in the batch. So I'm gonna call this fader. Uh, and then the location, and you can also put the date, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to click OK, and then I quit. And then the really sad part about this, and the bit that I really want Data Color to look at, is that you have to quit Lightroom to have that preset imported, right? So I'm going to go and do a quit Lightroom Classic, and then I'm going to reopen Lightroom Classic. There we go. So that little pop-up window that just came up said all custom developed presets were successfully converted. And now we have this preset over here. Look how the colors change. Total change. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that preset onto this file. And then all I then need to do is select all of the images that were shot in that shoot and press sync and off it goes. And so that profile will now be applied to all of my other images in the set. And that theoretically is perfect color for the location. So that's the before and that's the after. And you can see what it's doing if you go ahead and look in your HSL. Do you see all of these little tweaks that have happened? That's to equalize off your color. But it comes into its own when we look at skin tones, right? So that's the before, that's the after. Look at the difference in the owner's skin tones and in the color swatch. So I focused on the swatch for this image, but you can get just for the color in the skin. Total shift, total, total, total shift. And I can confirm with 100% accuracy that the corrected version is exactly what my eyeballs saw in real life in that scene. And so I'm left in a situation where I only then have to go through and do fine tweaks. And I can, if I want to, even further tweak the color, just to go ahead and kind of get a little bit more control on that, 
but it's more to do with then what I want to do afterwards rather than the camera getting it wrong and us trying to eyeball it back to something that looks bright. So would I recommend this color checker to every photographer in the entire world? Yeah, yeah, I would. I would, I really would. Who is it going to be perfect for? It's going to be perfect for people who want or need really, really good color. Really, 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 really good color. It, people who want that or need it, this is perfect. It's also going to be perfect for people who struggle to get the correct white balance or the correct color in their images, because this is going to really, really, really help to skyrocket that process up even further. So it's really, really good for people who struggle with that. Is the implementation process a bit of a ball ache, as we say in the UK? Um, yeah, I would say so. I don't feel like it's 100% kind of user friendly. It's an extra step before the shoot, but then it's a way up between, is that level of just utter perfection in color worth it, worth the time it's gonna take, worth the effort it's gonna take? Yeah, for me, it totally is. So. Am I 100% converted to using the color checker in every single shoot? Yes, 110% yes. But if that seems like a bit overkill for you, I've got something else that I wanna show you guys and I'll show you guys that in a couple of weeks. So thanks so much for watching this five minute Friday. Hopefully this little process was interesting for you. If it was, drop it down in the comments below. I'll put a link to where you can get this product as well in the description below. It is worth looking at, it really is. So, so like I said, I've got the Spider Checker 48. You don't need the 48 to get started. The 24 is more than enough to get working with. And to be honest, I think I probably went overkill with the 48. I think 24 is perfectly fine. And in the software, you can change whether it looks for the 24 or the 48. And so for me, because I've used that gray sheet, I've gone and looked for the 24 instead of the 48. Don't worry about any of that. Just have a look at it because genuinely, I think it's worth its weight in gold. So that's the wrap for that one. I'll see you again next week.